Hey, what's going on everybody? Brad the Guitologist here. This guitar has been on the channel before. This is a Martin that is owned by a local musician who is, as you can see, very active as a musician. You know, there's quite a bit of wear right here going on on this sound hole. Really, that needs to be reinforced. You know, I, I uh, have had this in before. This has been on the channel before, and uh, I did some work on the electronics. He uh, said the electronics were being kind of uh, intermittent again, and he wanted me to check the jack again. I replaced this jack before, about, uh, about a year ago or more, and uh, replaced it with a different style of jack that I thought would be a little more stable, a little more reliable. And I think it has been a little more reliable for him, but it, he was complaining that it was uh, at times apparently cutting in and out a little bit. Um, and he thought maybe it was some wiring on the inside. Well, I've gone through that and I can't, I cannot reproduce the problem. Um, but the other thing he wanted done was, as you can see, I've got a bunch of fret wire out here. He wanted these frets done. So we're probably going to go ahead and do a fret job on this. I told him I didn't think I was going to have time, but on second thought, uh, he's not going to pick it up until Tuesday, and right now it is late at night on Saturday, so I believe I'm going to have plenty of time to get to this and just go ahead and knock this out for him. As is usually the case when you do a fret job, I'm going to have to uh, cut him a new nut as well. It looks like he's already got problems with his nut because he's got a piece of paper in there to shim it up. So I'll either have to cut him a new nut or I'll have to knock this nut out and put a shim underneath it. We'll, we'll see what to do with that. I'll probably just cut him a new nut after we get the new frets on. But you can see, I mean, just look at how bad these frets are. They're really gouged out. You can see some of these are gouged out all the way down to the fretboard. I mean, these right in here are some of the worst I've ever seen. I'm not even sure how he's able to still even fret notes. On this guitar to be honest I mean that right there is all the way down the fretboard so yeah I think I'm gonna do him a solid here and just go ahead and I mean that look at that it started to actually dig into the fretboard so I mean he he really needs help here and uh, rather than send him away with this again without a fret job I'm just gonna go ahead and knock out the fret job and you know he's a working musician he needs his guitar and you know I want to do right by him and go ahead and take care of this and we're gonna first clean off some of the gag then we're going to pull frets uh, refret do all of that stuff yeah if that sounds like something you'd be interested in stick around okay so it's better than it was <laughs> at the very least These are so low and neglected, some of them don't even want to come out of there. Not a lot to even grab onto with some of these. It's been a while since I've done a refret. Long while actually. It's kind of nice to get the practice in. Yeah, these, this is a factory fret job. This does have binding, so this does have fret nibs, and uh, it has edges that go over those nibs. So we'll have to do some. We'll have to, you know, refret it with that in mind. As per usual with acoustic guitars, the stuff up here over the body is less of a problem. But we're going to go ahead and do a complete refret on this, so we have matching frets and everything. Pulling them is the easy part, as you can see, especially when it's a factory fret job. Usually at the factory, they don't put any kind of glues or anything in the fret slots. It's just They just tap them in and that's it. You know, they radius them properly and tap them in. And uh, that's all they do to seat frets at the factory. If it's been refret in the past, sometimes you'll find that it's been they've been super glued in. In that event, you have to get your soldering iron out usually and heat up each one and kind of spend a little more time wiggling it out of there and uh, I don't think we're gonna have to do any leveling on the board the board is not too bad it did have a little bit of a dimple going on well, it's not bad I'm not gonna touch this board I'm not gonna have to boards fine just gonna clean it up again and clean out those uh, fret slots I like this little tool it's got like a sharp edge on it and it's got this little scoop I can kind of get in there if stuff is getting stubborn 
Okay, so I have measured the old fret wire, uh, measured all it out, and it's more like a medium uh, in the width, uh, but I'm going to go with a slightly wider fret wire. Uh, the main thing is that we want the we want the tang to be really no deeper than the original tang, and we also want it to be uh, no wider than the original tang. I've measured it with the calipers and we're good on the width, uh, good on the depth. Like I said, we're wider uh, this way on the crown. And the thing that you really wanna make sure is that the tang width, crucially, is the same on what you replace it with. If you go too wide, then what you end up doing is you end up bowing the neck. I had this problem, the first first guitar I ever refretted, I had that problem, I didn't, I failed to measure the width of the, of the tang and uh, it was slightly wider than the original tang of the guitar that I was replacing. When I, by the time I replaced all the frets, the uh, neck had bowed backwards into like a banana shape, basically, and the guitar was just unplayable at that point. Uh, lesson learned on that one. But so I've got the uh, same width on this, on the tang. Uh, the wire itself, though, is going to end up being a little bit wider, so it's more of a jumbo uh, size fret, but which is fine. Uh, but we're going to roll with this because this is what I have on hand and uh, this is what we're going to have to be able to get him back up and going. So. Whoa, what the hell? Man, I'm bleeding from somewhere. All right, makeshift bandage later. Okay, let me show you how I'm uh, nipping the tangs on these. It's pretty simple, actually. I mean, a lot of people develop these really complex, sort of convoluted ways of going about this, but it's fairly easy if you have a just a standard fret nipper. You can get these from Stuart McDonald. You can make your own, too, by grinding a pair of nippers down. Just grab a, a bit of the tang, a, as much as you think that you need. You know, I'm just going to grab over here about this far. So what I want to do is push this part flat down against the face of the nipper here obviously and then we will just nip so I'll okay so I've nipped that and then what I want to do is I want to bend this way like that and what happens is the tang kind of comes loose right there and then you can just go ahead and nip off the little bit that you don't need being careful not to nip on the crown of the fret you just nip that little bit off and you're ready to go right there so that's how I do it now you could come in here and take the extra step of filing out that little bit that's left but that's not a huge deal you if as long as you tap it down good enough it will embed itself down into the binding there and you won't have to worry about it but what I do is just come in here I put uh, leave a little bit of space from the edge but just basically put it on one side and then come over here and then you nip what you don't need over here this one's already it's kind of unfortunate because I, sh I should have showed you with a different piece, but this one was already kind of the right length. But uh, what I'm going to do now is we'll nip the other other direction. I'll take about this much, I think. So you grab here, make sure it's flush on the top. And then we'll nip. Right? And then pull. And then pull. And then we've got that right there. It's coming loose already. It's ba it's practically already loose. And we just kind of nip off the little bit that's left there. Pretty simple. And then you end up you end up with a fret that's nipped on both ends. It's not really rocket science. Like I said, there are some um, really nice tools that people have made out there. Um, uh, Dennis Ponzio uh, has made a nice a nice tool for his operation. That he uses it looks really great but this is kind of the way I, i've done it that has worked for me, for me in the past so i just kind of you know you stick with what you know right and then And I, 
like to actually over radius the frets uh, and then and then tap them down till they stay. If you want to make sure that you're all the way down flat, you can get a, a flashlight here and you can kind of look and see, make sure that you're down flat all the way against the board all the way across. And here on all these I am so far. When you clip the other side, what I do is I put the tang where it belongs right here on the edge down inside of the slot. And then I come over here and when you when you actually clip this way, you don't want to uh, angle like this. You want to make sure you don't do this because if you you could take too much off. If anything, you want to angle a little bit outward when you make this cut. So you just angle that outward a little bit and make the cut that way and then flip it and do the tang. And and boom, there's a fret. I think if I was sitting here doing it all day long, yeah, I would probably come up with a better way to do it, a faster way. But, and I probably wouldn't tap so much. I'd probably get my tapping game down, you know. I always like to get a little bit of an extra tap down on the ends of the frets um, so that it kind of, if it's going to bend any direction, I want it bending down at the end, not up. Because the last thing you want is for the fret end to come up on you.
Okay, so I've gotten a few things done. I've gotten this little area around the sound hole shored up. I have put uh, some reinforcement under this. It runs all the way up to this brace here and down to the X brace here. And uh, I've got that where it'll be less likely to go all Willie Nelson on, on him. So that's good. And got the frets, obviously. Got a new nut on there. I don't have any large nut blanks, so this one will have to do. It doesn't quite go all the way to the edge of the fretboard, but it's pretty damn close. It's the, it's the closest match I've got. Uh, the side is actually coming loose. It's cracked on the inside, the reinforcement. So I'm going to have to shoot this with glue. Uh, we'll obviously get all this tape off of here before we do that and clean all this mess up, the tape, because this is duct tape so it's pretty nasty and we're gonna have to obviously re-glue the binding and all of that as well we'll go ahead and do that for him too while we've got this thing it's not uh, I'm not gonna hand it back like this again this is just not this is not cool I I have the ability to uh, fix this and I am going to do it so let's do that Yeah, duct tape on a Martin is just almost, it's almost a form of blasphemy to me. <laughs> Hell, it's not even really doing anything anyway. It's all coming, it's almost all loose, so it's holding the binding on, I guess. Look at this. Oh, God. <laughs> That's awful. I'm going to go wash my hands for a month. I'll be back. We are going to overspray this area, uh, but first we're actually going to try to fill in this area right here. You can see he's working on a pretty good little trigger hole right here. It's going to be hard to see the depth because you really don't have a very good perspective, but um, I can tell you that it's going all the way through the top. So it's going way, it's dug way down inside of here. So he's picked out all of this. So we're gonna fill this area. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some uh, wood shavings like this. Well, I've got a bag of wood shavings here. I'm gonna pick out some of these shavings. We're gonna add these shavings with some glue and we're gonna fill this area and we're gonna let that dry before we do anything else. But um, this needs to be filled so that it doesn't get any deeper. It doesn't continue to chip out. I have a good feeling that if someone back in the day had done this to Willie Nelson's trigger, it, this that would have thwarted the massive holes that he has in his guitar now. And also, if they had finished over the areas um, with some overspray, that would and some or, or some sealer at least, you know, some kind of something to seal in um, everything that's starting to chip away. Uh, it would have aged a lot better than it has, but we're gonna try to mitigate this before it gets to that point. The way I perceive this is, you know, this is this dude's number one. This is probably gonna be his forever guitar, and the more work we can do to this now, um, the more it's gonna head off wear in the future.
Okay, so here we go. After several coats of finish, I put some amber across this whole area, uh, painted it into the especially light parts with a paintbrush, and then went over all of this with uh, clear. I've kind of wet sanded it down to a semi-gloss, so now the whole thing is a little bit more cohesive. It definitely looks better. It's way more stable uh, when he comes in here with a pick now. It's not going to just start chipping away pieces of wood. It's going to take a while to get back down to the wood. So, um, And plus, we've got all of this filled in. I know it doesn't look you know, like it would have originally, but that's not what our goal was. Our goal was to stabilize all of this so it doesn't keep chipping out. And like I said, if someone had done this to uh, Willie Nelson's trigger guitar early on in the process... They would have stopped a lot of the holes that are in his guitar and it would have really stabilized it to the point i think you know another person could have played it for a whole another lifetime if they had caught it a little earlier beat to hell oh wow look at the frets everything wow no duct tape no duct tape <laughs> imagine that no duct tape on your guitar and can I'm you believe to be it? able to do this at a gig without it going yeah with a pickup well the, the, here's the thing I went through it and I could not repeat the problem so what I ended up doing was uh, uh the wires that were coming down, uh -huh. like just flopping everywhere, I, I tied those up to the side up here. Well, that's so very hopefully well could that be won't, it. That won't flop around and yeah. cause whatever was causing that. This looks like a different thing when I'm looking down here. The whiteness too. Yeah. <laughs> like... Yeah. It may take some getting used to because you were down, you were right on the fretboard with the, all those. Yeah, no. It doesn't feel different in a bad way, for sure. Okay. You know what I mean? 
Well, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if, if uh, you know, like I said, it takes a minute to get used to. So what did you what did you actually do with this again? How did I, you? Actually, they reinforced it on the bottom. Uh, there's a whole piece of wood on the bottom of this, and then I filled this and filled this. Nice. So it's, you know, it's not the most beautiful thing in the world. Oh, I didn't care. At least it's going to keep it from continuing to chip away. I've never given a shit what my guitar looks like if it sounds good. I've never given a shit what my car looks like if it gets me from A to B. Hey, yeah. You know? Yeah. So, and in fact, with guitar, I almost appreciate the word. Like, yeah.